This video will deal with channel capacity, which is the maximum possible data rate that can be transmitted through some medium under a given set of conditions. Now, to understand this, we also have to understand another concept called bandwidth, which has some different definitions. Strictly speaking, the bandwidth is the range of frequencies in a given signal. So the highest frequency that is part of the signal minus the lowest frequency that is part of the signal. However, in many cases, there is the bandwidth and then there is the effective bandwidth. And when we say bandwidth, we usually actually mean the effective bandwidth, which is the range of frequencies that contain the most energy and therefore can actually be used to de detect signals. So we're going to be using that second definition. So when we say bandwidth, we mean the range of frequencies where the most energy is concentrated. So we can actually measure this. But given that we have a certain bandwidth to our signal, and given some other properties of our signal, there's a question of what the actual capacity is. And so there are several different formulas for this, and one of them, which you need to know, is the Nyquist bandwidth formula. And so this formula is, of course, named after this individual. And an important thing to keep in mind with this formula is that it assumes a noise-free set of conditions. So there are many sources of noise that can distort a signal, things such as attenuation, delay distortion, and just general white noise. Um, so all of these can mess with a signal and cause problems. Um, but if we assume we are noise free, then the following formula applies. So in this formula, C is the capacity. And we will measure this in BPS. This stands for bits per second. The B stands for bandwidth. And because the bandwidth is the result of subtracting one frequency from another, or subtracting hertz from hertz, therefore we also measure the bandwidth in hertz. This last variable, M, is the number of signal levels. And so here's what this means. One way to transmit signals is to have two different voltage levels, one for a zero and one for a one. That seems pretty straightforward. It's an easy way to transmit binary. But there are transmission schemes that use more than two signal levels, as we will learn about in the later video. So if we want to have m distinct signal levels in our transmission, and we are going to use a certain bandwidth, then we can determine what the capacity is. Notice that this here is a log 2. Now I'll show you an example using this formula as well as the next formula I'll teach you all at once. So the next formula is the Shannon capacity. So this formula is attributed to Claude Shannon, one of the major founders of information theory. And this formula does incorporate noise. However, one caveat that sh should still be clarified here is that it assumes white noise, which is fairly consistent and predictable. If you have very unpredictable noise, which is usually known as impulse noise, then you still can't reach the maximum theoretical capacity promised by this formula. But if you have predictable noise sources, then the Shannon capacity does apply. Now, before I can explain this formula, we need to know a new term, and that is SNR. This is the signal to noise ratio. This is simply a measure of signal power over noise power. And this is actually a unitless measurement. So you'll simply have a number for this. However, these concepts are a bit vague. What's usually e easier to measure on an actual transmission line is 
is a quantity in decibels. And so we have this formula for signal to noise ratio in decibels. And so notice that this subscript means this is a completely distinct entity. And so this equals 10 times log base 10 of the unitless SNR. Now this is not Shannon's formula yet, but we do need this to do Shannon's formula. This SNR in decibels is what we are able to measure, but this unitless SNR is what we need for Shannon's formula, which looks like the following. So this formula once again has C and B, where C is the capacity measured in bits per second, and B is the bandwidth measured in hertz, and then we have log base two of the quantity one plus the unitless SNR. This formula provides a theoretical maximum value for the capacity, but once again, keep in mind that the actual capacity is generally less in practice because of the difference in the types of noise that are assumed uh, in this formula versus reality uh, and other things that simply can't be predicted. Now, let's work an example that combines these ideas. Let's say that the spectrum of some given signal is between 3 megahertz and 5 megahertz. This is actually a really large range and a bit unrealistic, but the numbers will work out fine and we'll see why we probably wouldn't have a signal like this. Now, if we have a signal with this broad range, that means that the bandwidth would be the 5 megahertz minus the 3 megahertz, leaving us with 2 megahertz is the actual bandwidth. Now we're also going to assume that we know the SNR in decibels, once again because this is something that can be measured. So SNR sub dB equals 30 decibels. So once again, this is a fairly large value, but it'll work for our computations. Now using the formula we saw previously, we know that SNR dB is equal to 10 times log base 10 of SNR. So first we'll divide both sides by 10, and we'll be left with 3 equals log 10 of SNR. And to get rid of the log base 10, we have a base of 10 on each side, and we're raising this 10 to the third, and this 10 to the log 10 of SNR. So 10 raised to the log 10 simply cancels out, and we're left with SNR on this side, and 10 raised to the 3 is simply 1000. Zero, zero, zero. So we have now our unitless SNR value, 1,000. Once again, a fairly large value. Now given this information, we want to determine the capacity of this channel, the theoretical maximum as determined by Shannon's formula. Now Shannon's formula says that C equals B times log base 2 of 1 plus SNR. So we can plug in values here. We know that we want to find what C is. B is 2 megahertz, and we have log base 2 of 1 plus 1,000. So we need to figure out what log base 2 of 1,001 is. As computer scientists, we should know that 2 to the 10 is 1,024, and 2 to the 9 is 512 but we want to be a bit more precise than that, so we'll have to use a calculator, which also requires us to remember some rules of logs. So typical calculators only allow you to compute base 10, but log base 2 of 1001 is equal to log 10 of 1001 over log 10 of 2. And so both of these values can be put into a typical handheld calculator. And if you do this calculation, you'll get approximately 
9.967, which once again makes sense because 2 raised to the power of 10 equals 1024, which is only a little bit larger than this. So we have 2 megahertz times 9.967 giving us a capacity of 2 times that, which comes out to 19.934 megabits per second. So the unit conversion there is a bit strange. Um, there's no point in which the units actually cancel out. We simply measure capacity with bits or megabits per second and bandwidth with hertz or megahertz per second. So it's important that because of the megahertz there, we also have megabits here. But as for where the hertz become bits, there's no clear distinction there. So this is the theoretical maximum capacity of this channel. Now, given this information, let's assume that we have no noise, which once again, not reasonable, and determine according to Nyquist, how many signal levels we would need to use this channel. So Nyquist's formula is C equals 2B log 2 of M. And so M is the number of signal levels. We want to determine what M needs to be for this channel to work. So we have this capacity, which we can plug in. And we know that the bandwidth is 2 megahertz. And so now we simply need to solve for m. So 2 times 2 is 4. And if we divide this side by 4 using a calculator, we get 4.9835 is equal to log 2 of m. And so to get rid of the log base 2, we have a base of 2 on each side. And that makes m equal to 2 raised to this power. Now, if I use a calculator to determine what this is, I'll get 31.636. But once again, as computer scientists, we should quickly see that 2 raised to the fifth is 32. And if m, which is a number of signal levels, meaning an integer value, has a result of this, then we would actually have to have one additional signal level to actually accommodate this amount of bandwidth and capacity anyway. So the real final result of m would be 32 distinct signal levels, which is completely unreasonable. So these calculations are all valid, but what this shows us is that we probably couldn't implement this in practice, uh, or rather, perhaps more accurately, the assumption by Nyquist that our channel is noise and air free is why we would come up with a result like this. Because in a real system, if you have 32 distinct signal levels, you're not going to be able to distinguish between them with much accuracy.